With this particular video, we're going to look at a couple of functions in the toolpathing section of ArtCam Express that will have a dramatic effect on uh, how your project machines. The two uh, that we're going to look, the two functions we're going to look at in this video are called step down and step over. Now you can see I have created a workspace um, in ArtCam Express, 12 inches by 12 inches. I've already imported a 3D model of a horse. This is actually one of the grayscale models from the DVD that comes with the uh, iCarver. Uh, you can see that we haven't created a toolpath as of yet, and the way you know that is that there is no plus sign to the left of the toolpath, which means we do not have a toolpath selected at this point, or have not created one, I should say. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a um, machine relief toolpath, and uh, we're first of all going to machine the area to machine will be the whole relief, so we're going to leave that uh, whole relief. And we're going to go down here and we're going to select our uh, conical V-bit. And uh, you can see I've selected the iCarver conical V-bit because there's a fair bit of detail in this horse. Um, I need to just move this window here just for a brief second. As a general rule of thumb, uh, if you're selecting tools, um, when you're doing 3D modeling, essentially you're going to be using ball nose cutters. The iCarver conical V-bit, even though it doesn't um, describe it, you, uh, it is actually a uh, ball nose cutter. So it's a ball nose carving tool. Um, and you can see that it says radius engraving right here, so it tells you it has a radius tip. Uh, the other options for us if we were going to be machining a 3D model might be a quarter inch ball nose or an eighth inch ball nose, and you see these tool tools are listed here. General rule of thumb is this, if the image has a lot of detail, and there will be some detail in the horse's eye, in the muscle structure, uh, probably in the tail and the mane, there will be some, some fine detail. Typically, you'll want to use as fine a tool as possible to get that detail. If you're looking at a model that has very little detail but has a lot more contours and shapes, for example, if you were machining the um, shape of an egg, as an example, there's not a lot of detail in the shape of that egg, but there is some contours and shapes, or there's that sphere that, that you're trying to create. In those cases, you would tend to want to use larger tools because you'll have less uh, uh, tendency to have machining lines, and you're going to really not try to machine detail, you're just trying to smooth the surface as much as possible. But in this particular case, because it's the horse with detail, we're going to use the conical V-bit 132nd. Now you'll notice that we can edit tools over here. If I click on the edit function, there's a lot of uh, functionality within that tool that we have some control over. And here are the two that we're going to take a look at right now. One of them is called step down. Step down is how much do I want to machine this project each time it passes. So for example, supposing I was going to machine this to a machine thickness of three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to machine a three quarter inch uh, 3D model. I don't want to do that all in one pass. So what I might do is I might change my step down to say something like 0.25 inches. With an eye carver, typically I tend to stay around a quarter of an inch max uh, past depth. Uh, sometimes you can get a little bit deeper and get into some softer woods, but typically the hardwood about a quarter of an inch or uh, six millimeters is about as deep as you want to go. So we're going to change the step down to 0.25 inches. So in other words, if I'm going to machine this to a 3 quarters of an inch depth, it's going to do it in three passes. Um, the other option that I want to take a look at is what we call step over. And you see it right here. So right now we've got our step over set at 0.008. In other words, this will machine in a linear fashion. So it's going to go back and forth across the model. And as it does that, so as it moves left to right, after it makes that pass, it's going to move down 8 thousandths of an inch, then go right to left, down 8 thousandths of an inch, left to right, so on and so forth. So for the sake of this example, I'm going to change this step over to point, uh, let's say point uh, 2 inches. So it's 20 thousandths of an inch is the step over. And just going to let you see what this will do. We're going to select that tool, and in our material setup, we're going to set uh, our material thickness. Let's just have a look at what we have here. So right now we have a model thickness. This model will be machined to a, a maximum depth of 0.25 inches. So if you remember, our step down is at 0.25, which means it will machine this in a single pass. And we're going to click OK, and we're going to calculate that. And there's our calculation completed. And now we're going to do our simulation. So I'm just going to click on Reset Simulation and simulate all toolpaths so that we'll make sure that we have a clean simulation. And you can see 
reasonably fast simulation, which is a pretty good indicator that our step over is fairly wide. Um, the key will be uh, whether or not it gives us enough detail and if we have eliminated machining lines sufficiently to make us uh, happy with it where we don't have a lot of sanding to take uh, to do on this particular model. So if we zoom in and if we look at it, you just get in a little bit closer. You can see that in here we see machining lines. As I zoom in on it, they really become more visible. You can see there are pretty some pretty substantial machining lines here and we're going to probably not be happy with this particular project. And you will see this from time to time on a model. Um, this is where the step over needs to be adjusted in order to make uh, this correct. So in order to do that, we don't want to create a new toolpath. So we'll just double click on the existing toolpath that we've created. And we will go to our tool. And in the settings, if you hit this drop down, you'll see that the all of these settings show up. Um, directly underneath where the tool is listed. And you can see right now our step over is at 0 0.02. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this to say 0 0.008, which is what it was set by default at when we started um, this particular project. And we're going to recalculate. You'll see that the calculation even takes a little bit longer because it is calculating more lines of G-code. And when it's completed, we're going to close the machine relief window. And once again, we click on simulation. We're going to reset our simulation so that we don't have the old simulation there. And just so you know, if we didn't reset the simulation and we just simulated, we wouldn't see a difference because that old simulation would still be visible. Now you see that I stayed zoomed in because I want to particularly focus on that same area that we just looked at to see if it corrected the problem with those machining lines. So we'll let this finishing finish its uh, simulation. And when it does, what we're hoping to see is that those machining lines that were troublesome for us have disappeared. And we should see that happen very, very soon. It's never soon enough when you're waiting. And there we go. So you can still see some machining lines, but it certainly corrected it quite a bit. Um, if we wanted to, uh, we could go back in and actually change this again. We could drop this down to point, uh, 0.003 or point zero zero four. Um, the truth is that the, the simulation will somewhat over-exaggerate machining lines. The truth is, as zoomed in as we are on this, we probably aren't really dealing with a large issue. What I've, my experience has been with this particular tool, uh, step overs at 0 .007, 0 .008, seem to be pretty satisfactory. Um, but that's the use of the step down and the step over functions um, in our Camexpress.